for you use long-term Fannie Mae Frank Mac deals on more yield type of deals, but on value add deals, you do a bridge loan. Bridge loans, uh, the good thing is you don't have the prepayment penalties like you do on the long-term Fannie Mae Freddie Mac. There's a more in-depth conversation about this in the syndication e-course, but essentially bridge loans magnify things. It makes good deals better, bad deals worse. I'll say that again. Makes good deals better, bad deals worse. So you as a passive investor need to realize what's a good deal. Kind of like money makes good people better and stingy people cheap. This is a story about a dude named Lane. Then one day he went and tried to rent them out. And then he became one of the best of me. Do you work in the same lender in the same market? So this, the lenders that we all use are like the brokers that go out to the community banks. Or But if it's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac lending, it's all the same large agencies. Uh, Arbor, Sopal, to name a few. There's only on a handful. And so the, in that respect, it's a lot easier than residential and all like the, the people doing four units, like 60 unit is really confusing because, and the loan terms aren't as good too. It's no man's land because it's the most risk from a lender's perspective. You use the same type of loans, bridge loan. It depends on what the deal calls for. You use long-term Fannie Mae Frank Mac deals on more yield type of deals, but on value add deals, you do a bridge loan. Bridge loans, uh, the good thing is you don't have the prepayment penalties like you do on the long-term. I mean, there's a more in-depth conversation about this in the syndication e-course, but essentially bridge loans magnify things. It makes good deals better, bad deals worse. I'll say that again. It makes good deals better, bad deals worse. So you as a passive investor need to realize what's a good deal. Kind of like money makes good people better and stingy people cheaper. On exit, do you do a cash out refinance or 1031? No, we do not because we all think that you guys are grownups and you guys can manage your passive activity losses as you should. Stockpiling passive activity losses for the eventual cash outs at the end to be able to pay your capital gain and your depreciation recaptures and your bonus depreciation. I don't know how this is a problem to just continually kick the can down the road for a really long time. On some of the smaller deals that are more heavy value add, that are more accessible, they're primarily go out to the family office group only. We are starting some of these rollouts where it is meant to be a more, we roll 1031 or cash out, or 1031 into the next asset to keep it rolling and rolling and rolling more as a legacy deal. I guess I forget what the word for that is, but it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. Like a, a baseball team that kind of grows up with each other in a way, which is why we take the VIPs, the family office people, because it's the people that kind of trust us. We don't have to explain everything to them. And it's, they're a little bit more like risky deals, but I think a lot more return because of the, the heavier value add, less cash flow. And we talked about pref, prefs. So the way I like to see things is when I'm a passive investor, it's a very transparent, straight split. Some people like to see more pref in the beginning, pay to investors for, but general partners, I'm not saying this for us, but general partners are always the smartest people in the room. They're the one creating the split scheme. When they're giving you the pref in the beginning, you can bet your butt that they're taking it at the upside when the deal gets knocked out of the park. When I'm a passive investor, I just want it to be straight even split. So when I get, when the investment just absolutely skyrockets, I want equal as much of the upside. But the, Depends how you're an investor. If you'd rather have a, a most now and give up your upside down the road, then that's just up to you. This website offers very general information concerning real estate for investment purposes. Every investor situation is unique. Always seek the services of licensed third-party appraisers and inspectors to verify the value and condition of any property you intend to purchase. Use the services of professional title and escrow companies and licensed tax, investment, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed as in every investment there is risk. The content found here is just my opinion and things change and I reserve the right to change my mind. Above all else, do your own analysis and think for yourself because in the end, you're the only person who is going to look out for your best